The man born as Wang Xiaoming grew up in Sanxi in the Guangdong province of the Qing Empire. He traveled to Japan to study in a government program, there meeting with the Tang Wenhui and joining their ranks, quickly becoming one of Sun Yat-sen's closest allies. He would go on to be jailed for an attempted assassination attempt on Prince Chun, or Zaifeng, Puyi's father and regent. This made him a national hero in 1911 when he was freed following the Xinhai Revolution. Once freed, he would be the only man to accompany Sun Yat-sen outside of KMT-controlled regions, and was the person that recorded Sun's final will in 1925. It seemed pretty obvious that Wang would be the one to inherit Sun's position, but it was not to be, as Chiang Kai-shek would surpass him after a successful purge of communists from the National Revolution Army, the Canton Coup. His rule was then absolute. Afterwards, Wang was sent to Europe by Chiang as he was the leader of the left-leaning wing of the KMT, and expelling communists from the party while he was there would be an issue he'd fight. Returning to China during the Northern Expedition, Wang was set up an opposition government in Wuhan which emphasized working with communists, not purging them in Shanghai. The split between Wang and Chiang's government would become known as the Minghan Separation. Wang's government would be crushed by Chiang brutally, and Wang allied himself with Chiang to save his skin. Wang would align himself with the warlords against Chiang in the Central Plains War, and would go on to serve in Chiang's government. He would continue his rivalry with Chiang even as premier, and would spend much of his time out of China, being more of a progressive puppet of Chiang. In regards to war with Japan, Wang was pessimistic that they could win, and that white powers were the bigger threat. During the Second Sino-Japanese War, he would become even more pessimistic and favored negotiating with the Japanese. Then in 1938, he would travel to French Indochina and announce his support for the Japanese, as this would give him control over China away from Chiang Kai-shek's grasp. He would also suffer another assassination attempt, which would wound him. The reorganized national government of the Republic of China would be created, and Wang would be made head of state. This did not come without cost, as the new government was nothing more than a puppet state meant to fuel the Japanese Empire's war machine, a machine that would one day be Wang's downfall. Life in the puppet state was not so great as one could imagine, as in Shanghai alone the cost of living increased massively. To obtain certain items, one had to resort to using the black market or influencing the right people. There was also the Japanese and Calabrese secret police, which had brutal reprisals waiting in store for anyone who bravely resisted the regime. The education system of the regime was stylized to create an obedient workforce that would work in factories or mines, and making the Chinese more like the Japanese, similar to what the Japanese did in Korea. Through all of these policies, Wang became a hated figure. As the war continued to go ever more in favor of the Allies, the condition of the collaborative government's citizens worsened as well. Wang would travel to Japan in 1944, while Japan still had something of a navy left, for treatment due to the injury sustained in the assassination attempt, and would go on to die on the 10th of November 1944. The man left a troubled and problematic history behind him, but he did do one thing for amazing, making the Chinese nationalists and communists agree on one thing, that Wang Jingwei was nothing more but a traitor to the Chinese people.